Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I'm going to be showing you my ultimate retirement calculator spreadsheet. I spent several days working through the math on this, and I just felt compelled to share it with you guys. If you haven't seen my other video on retirement planning, there will be a link in the description. It's a great overview if you know, you're know you kind of new to investing and retirement planning in general. So let's just dive right in to the spreadsheet. You can see up here in the top left corner, you've got all this blue information. Basically the user, which is you, is going to be inputting information in this blue area. So you'll answer all the questions here and you'll also select off to the right if there's a Roth or traditional option. You've got a drop down where you can kind of click that. Uh, there's also one other tab I want to make you aware of. If you click here, the AA lookup tables, this is your asset allocation lookup table. And so this spreadsheet, it takes into account what the ratio of bonds and stocks will be through time. And so you've got kind of a table of age compared to bonds and stocks. You know, some people like to carry their age in bonds or they'll do age minus 10 for the percentage of bonds or even age minus 20. Uh, I have kind of my own calculation here. Th this is the same numbers that I showed in the previous uh, retirement planning video. So you can type in different ratios here. Just make sure that, you know, whatever numbers you type in like this 0 0.1, 0 0.9, everything adds to 1.0. It's a hundred percent, obviously through time. Uh, you can change these numbers and it will automatically update the values here. And so just to give you a big picture view of what you're looking at, uh, anytime you change a number here or in the asset allocation lookup table, it will automatically update this graph. This graph is very important because it shows if you're going to be able to reach your retirement goals. The dots on the graph are basically showing on the y-axis you've got the year-end account balance by age. So it's your total portfolio through time. So you can see here in the beginning it's growing up and then eventually it kind of flat lines, you're taking money out and then you start to, you know, to start really depleting money as inflation starts to kind of eat away at things. Um, and so yeah, that's a really important graph to look at and understand. Uh, just to show you, if I change something like, let's change my salary needed in retirement from 70,000 to 50,000, we should get a much, you know, big improvement here. And you can see it changed the shape of that curve automatically. So pretty cool stuff. Also notice here at the bottom that you've got some information that, you know, kind of summary information. So funds at retirement age, whatever age you specify that you will retire at, it will look at how much money you will have at the beginning of that age. So, you know, in this example, our retirement age, age 58, you would have $4.2 million. And then the funds at death age is green, 10.8 million, because it's greater than zero. If for some reason you didn't have enough money, let's say uh, in this example, let me change this to maybe 100,000 is what I need now. Now it's gonna be, you'll see the curve is now negative because whenever I die, which again is another input, death age 95, it's not enough money, negative $11 million, it shows red. So you should always want to see a green cell here, meaning that you have enough money. Obviously the curve should never fall below the x-axis, which is indicating you're you know losing money, which is what you don't want. I also calculate something down here called scenario value. Don't worry about this. I'll talk about this in a little, in a little while. It's kind of like a net present value. It just kind of shows you the general score, I guess you could say of, you know, does it make more sense to pick Roth or traditional? So you can change these between Roth and traditional and you'll get a new scenario value. And uh, there's also a button down here to kind of, so if I click this button, it will change Roth and traditional automatically and it will kind of calculate this scenario value for all of these options, both Roth, both traditional, one Roth, one traditional or the other and then it will kind of you know automatically calculate those and then show you which one which is better for you you know is it better to have both Roth or both traditional so I'll just quickly show you that so if I click this button spreadsheets gonna start making some changes there automatically and then it, there will be an orange fill by you know by default next to the option that's best based on the highest scenario value so negative 2.4 million is better than negative 3 million so it picked both should be Roth but again, I haven't even shown you the inputs yet. So let's go through like, what does all this mean? So first thing you do is type in your birthday. In this example, it's we're using January 1st, 1992. That puts you at 28 years old. I could easily change this to something like, you know, 1975, and then the sheet would start at age 45. 
Let's go back to January 1st, 1992 is your birthday. So what is your current Roth savings? We've got 20,000 in Roth, 20,000 in traditional. This is basically how much money you've currently saved in tax advantaged accounts. And now let's go to uh, this question here. What are your, what, is, what age will you quit contributing to your retirement accounts? So normally the quit contributions age, you know, maybe we say 67 and you're also retiring at 67. For most people, Using the sheet, I think these numbers will be the same. Retirement age is whenever you start withdrawing money from your portfolio. So the quit age is basically when you quit your job. So like, let's go back to 50 or something. In this example, you would quit your job at age 50, but you wouldn't start withdrawing money from the accounts until age 67. So, you know, maybe you're working this corporate job and you just want to work until you're age 50 but you don't actually want to retire at 50. Maybe you just want to do some other lower paying job to get by until age 67. So between these years, 50 to 67, you'll still have all your money that you contributed to your account, but it's just going to grow on compounded interest, you know, through time or compounded earnings. I mean, just from the stock market growing and whatnot. Uh, so sometimes you want to, you know, play with this a little bit to see, well, I can actually quit my job, you know, at 50 and maybe, you know, wait until age 67, I can go work at the, Starbucks or something, whatever, you know, really my dream job is, I guess that's not going to give you as much money, but at least, you know, you could still retire potentially comfortably. So the next thing you want to do is specify your death age. You can either, you know, type in your own number or you can kind of pick from the drop down here. So maybe you're going to live to 110. That's kind of a long time to be alive. So most people assume not age 90, 95, something like that. You can also put in here the inflation rate. So, uh, Typical inflation rate is anywhere between two to 4%. Most financial planners will assume 3%. Uh, here's where you put your current salary in today's dollars. This is a pre-tax number. So if you're making 140K per year before taxes, go ahead and put that there. You can also put your yearly salary increase during your working years. So you, if you don't want to account for that, you could put a 0%. And so you'll notice here, initial salary, there's a column here. By the way, there's a lot of columns here. <laughs> uh, there's probably like 20 columns or so. I won't show you all of them, but just to show you this real quick, 140,000 a year, the 0% increase, right? So if I change this to 3%, press enter, now you can see every year it's increasing by 3%. So it's like I said, dynamic, very sophisticated calculation. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you guys back on the quick contributions in retirement. Uh, if you retire before age 60, so Let's say I'm going to start taking money out at age 58. You'll notice here there's a penalty for early withdrawal. The IRS sets the rule at 10%. Uh, so if you start withdrawing before age 60, you're going to get hit with a 10% penalty. And there's a uh, withdrawal, sorry, there's a withdrawal uh, section here that shows, okay, traditional withdrawal, you're taking out 320000 This orange cell basically means that you're withdrawing and you're receiving a penalty. So this is a 10% penalty. And you can see uh, your inflated need. See, at this point in time, your need is 288,000, but you're taking out 320,000 because you're accounting for a 10% penalty. Right here is age 60 at this row. Age 60, you need 305,000, so you take out in the future 305,000. There's no penalty there. So just wanted to kind of give you that tidbit of information. Uh, but anyways, back to the um, retirement inputs. So yeah, your yearly salary increase, maybe you're making 3% per year. That way you can at least pace with inflation, right? Inflation's 3% per year. Your salary will increase by 3% per year. You should have the same buying power through time. And then finally, we get to the uh, 401k contribution section. Uh, whoops, don't want to do that. Uh, your 401k contribution so maybe you're putting in 12%. You can select here, is that going to be Roth or traditional? I'm going to go with Roth because I think I can make more money that way. Employer match contributions. So some companies will give you a match dollar per dollar. So in this case, it's 6%. And there's no option for Roth or traditional here because uh, anytime an employer, you could have a, a Roth 401k and you could also have an employer match to the same 401k, but it's actually set it in a different account and it's by default a traditional uh, 401k. So you actually don't have the option to do a Roth by your employer. So that's why there's no option there. Um, so like I said, 6% in this case. And then you've got 
some IRS information. What is the max 401k contribution allowed if you're less than 40? I'm filming this video in 2020 and right now that limit is 19,500. If you're over 50, you can do a catch up contribution. It's an extra $6,500 per year. So the spreadsheet knows, you know, if your salary has grown to a certain percentage and you're, you know, you're contributing a certain amount, you could actually, because the spreadsheet will stop at 19,500, even if your percentage is, you know, greater than that. So if you're over 50, it'll allow for a catch up contribution up to 26,000 per year. So obviously in the future, if this changes, you can update these numbers here. Now I've also got a yearly IRA contribution. Again, select Roth or traditional. What are you going to be contributing? It assumes you're making these contributions every year until you uh, quit your job. So that's, you know, back to the quit contributions age up here. Um, anyways, I have 12,000 per year for my yearly IRA contribution because I have an IRA and my wife has an IRA. We put both of them in there and right now the, the, IRA limit is 6,000 per year. So 6,000 times two, 12,000, that's what we put in there. And so now here's a really important question. What is the salary that you need in retirement? This is in today's dollars. And so a good way to think of this is kind of think about how much money you spend every month. You know, you can just add up what's your water bill plus your electricity, plus your you know insurance bill, car note, mortgage, you know, whatever, add it all together and then subtract out the things that you don't think you'll need in retirement, like your car is paid off, your mortgage is paid off, you know, you're not going out to eat as much maybe, or maybe, the, you know, maybe, maybe you have a completely different idea, you know, you want to spend a lot more money in retirement. Just go ahead and put a number here that you think is, you know, reasonable. And again, this is after tax in retirement in today's dollars. So, you know, how much roughly would that be? And then another cool thing is I'm, I've got bonds and stocks kind of separately in the spreadsheet. So you can specify the total return percentage per year. This includes capital appreciation on the securities as well as the dividends. So if you, you know, if you use a three fund portfolio like me with Vanguard, I use index funds, a typical total bond market index fund, including dividends is kind of like a four, four to five percent per year thing. And for stocks, you know, if you're using uh, Vanguard total stock market, Vanguard total international stock market, those are actually kind of around nine or ten percent um, per year, but you've also got to you know account for expense ratios, things like that. So I play a little bit more conservative on the stocks. I'm only assuming eight point five percent. You know, you might be able to get away with nine percent here. Um, so you can just kind of put in whatever values you want here. This is going to kind of account for the growth in your assets over time. And then like I showed you earlier, the penalty for early withdrawal, if you're before age 60, this is 10%. And then here's kind of an important question. What is your effective tax rate during your working years? This is your current uh, effective tax rate. This doesn't mean, you know, if you're in the 22% tax bracket that you put 22% because if you're in the 22% tax bracket, it doesn't mean your effective rate is actually 22%. You know, it might be something like 16%. And so if you go to your yeah, maybe maybe you use TurboTax or something for your federal tax returns. You can look at your 1040 statement and you can actually see what your effective tax rate was. Basically what you do is you figure out what is your taxable income. So it's kind of like your gross income minus the deductions that you were able to claim and then compare that to the total taxes you actually paid. So total taxes paid divided by taxable income equals the effective tax rate. So uh, in this case it's 16%. And then finally, the effective tax rate in retirement. Um, if you're not sure, you know what that's going to be. I think you could reasonably assume, you know, kind of the same numbers. But I included this black cell here to kind of help guide you on this final input. So percentage of salary needed in retirement. So 84%. This means that whenever you go to, you know, retire, that you will only need to spend 84% of what you were earning right before you retired. So you're not going to be spending as much money as what this means. And so if this thing is less than 100%, which it is, then it's reasonable to assume your effective tax rate in retirement is going to be the same as this or less. You know, maybe it's a little bit less, assuming the rules don't change. You know, if the rules are the same and you're not spending as much money, then by all means, you know, it should be a little bit less. But maybe in the future they increase tax rates 
and you know you can not be spending as much money but still have the same tax rate so you know kind of take this with a grain of salt it doesn't really change the value that much but it's just another input to be aware of and yeah that's kind of the entire spreadsheet i already showed you the macro to enable text box you click this it runs a sensitivity on what the option which best option would be for you just kind of you know like i showed you roth both roth is going to be what you want to do here in this example we are not <laughs> earning enough money through time so Maybe we need to, instead of quitting contributing at age 50, maybe we should con you know, quit at age 55 or something. Uh, still not enough. Let's say we quit at 65 and we retire at 65. That's going to have a much different scenario. So yeah, we're in the green here, $5 million. So you can play with this, type in all your inputs, see if you're on track, see if you can retire early. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions about the spreadsheet, feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, one other thing I want to show you about real quick before I end the video is that whenever it comes to withdrawals in the future, the spreadsheet is going to assume here that you will withdraw all traditional assets first and then Roth assets. So you'll notice here, uh, you know, you're not withdrawing anything in the beginning, but then now you're right here, you're starting to withdraw. It goes for traditional assets first and then it depletes those and then after take Roth and then go back to the traditional, you know, if you have it. But the priority is take out traditional first because that's the general advice is to, you know, spend your traditional assets first, then Roth in retirement. So that's kind of built into the logic also. Um, and yeah, so if you guys have any questions about the spreadsheet, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks, have a good day. Hey guys, real quick, I just want to show you how to download the spreadsheet. You'll notice in the description, there's a link. Go ahead and copy paste that into a browser like this and press enter, it's going to load up kind of an internet version of the spreadsheet. Give it a minute, wait for the graph to kind of load up with data points. It takes a second and you'll notice this yellow ribbon across the top. Go ahead and press edit workbook. Again, give it a second. There's a lot of data here. Um, okay. Now that the, uh, once the data points come back on the graph should be good to start using. Okay. Click the file button at the top left here, and then you'll notice there's a save as option and you can press download a copy. This will download a local copy of the spreadsheet. That way you can access it locally on your desktop. So you can see it's downloaded here, the ultimate retirement calculator. Uh, do note whenever you open this spreadsheet that it will ask you if you want to enable macros. So let's just see if I open this spreadsheet. Uh, it's opening right now. You'll see at the top it says protected view. You have to click enable editing. You also have to click, you know, security warning. Mac macros have been disabled. Press this enable content button. And now this is the actual spreadsheet here. So hope you guys enjoy. Thanks.